I'm sorry to have regrets would have implied I did something wrong. I did nothing wrong. If necessary, I would murder again the words of the man known as the White Wolf in 1992, Baron Strader showing no remorse after shooting 22 black people in a mass attack with a 9mm pistol straight on a former police officer went onto the street to Pretoria at lunchtime in 1988. He shot every black person he saw in Stratham Square before he was overpowered by a security guard. Seven people died in that incident. And he spent less than four years in jail. Today, tensions continue to rise between black and white citizens, obviously not at the same scale. Some are exposed, some remain concealed. 30 years after the Stratham Square massacre, should we be worried about the possibility of we doing enough to stop another racist-inspired attack? Bradley Stain, an author who witnessed the Stratham killings, Mampela Rampela, Black Consciousness Movement, co-founder and activist with Marjorie Dobson, director of the Kulamani Support Group, are with me in the studio to discuss this. Really appreciate all three of you coming in. Should we be worried? You know, I, I honestly think what we need to do as a nation is really rehash a lot of the things of the past. I feel during the transition uh, from the National Party government to the ANC, um, a lot was just pushed under the rug and just, you know, told to not say anything about it. So I think the more that we address these pains and these histories so that um, us as white people can understand the pain um, that a young black child experienced maybe um, being uh, having his shack uh, turned upside down by security police at night. You know, um, very often uh, I find um, people in South Africa that say, well, why do you keep rehashing this? I'm not rehashing it. What I want us to do is see if we can actually address the pains of the past properly so and that we can move forward. You've got to acknowledge the past to move forward, don't you? Exactly. And what, what about you? I mean, obviously, you, you lived through that time. The tensions are, are very different. But are you concerned at, at what we're seeing at some of the, the hate speech, the, the growing divisions again? We should be very worried because what we are seeing in terms of verbal, physical, and unexplained attacks on people and their characters is a reflection of the unfinished business mm. of the transition to democracy. Mm. You cannot have 500 plus years of abnormality mm. in terms of saying that a, major, a majority of your country are inferior and not deserving of the same treatment as the minority who abrogated to themselves mm. a superior role. That wounding experience has wounded not just black people, but white people as well. And we should have had a more elaborate process than the TRC to deal with the impact of humiliation and the humili humiliating acts. Now, we are, you are asking, are we worried? We should be worried. When a, a grade five kid asked the question in 19... I mean, in 2018, can a black teacher teach? What does that tell you? Mm. It tells you that we have raw racist wounds. And, in, and, and in talking about the schools, I mean, how much violence we're seeing in schools, students against their teachers, blacks against whites. I mean, that, that's obviously still... Uh, the reality on the ground, the knock-on effect. It is very deep. It is not just the violence in the schools, the violence in the families, mm. the violence against women and children. And it's not just some little clap here. These are brutal yeah. attacks. Yeah. And we also know that there is structural violence. Mm. Why do we still, in 2018, have shacks yeah. in a country as rich as this? Why are we underperforming in our education, in our health. We are a people who are bearing deep wounds that we are not acknowledging. Mm. When we acknowledge wounds, we can heal them. And when the wounds heal, they release mm. 
mm. the creative energies of our of South African mm. and African people because it's not just the problem of South Africa you look at what's happened in Zimbabwe mm. how do you have someone who fought for freedom kill his country's freedom mm. it's there in DRC is there all over the unfinished business mm. and what we need to remember is that unless we have healed those emotional wounds, mm -hmm. liberated our minds from the constructs, the, the internalization mm. of what is abnormal, which yes. is color coding, white, good, black, bad, mm. even today. Mm. So we need to go back to that unfinished business. And it is exciting to see when it works, mm. when you okay. talk to young people or whatever. Let's get to that. I definitely want to deal with the excitement because I think we, we need it. But, but let's also deal with your thoughts on where we are today and, and how worried we should be about what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I want to echo Mampela's words about the possibilities we had to, to be much further along the road of healing if we had understood that an 18-month TRC for victims was only the beginning. And so presently we have 104,000 people organized in Kolumani, and we have to do a lot of work around healing the wounds, mm -hmm. psychosocial things. But the, but the real healing comes when you can encounter, a black person can encounter a white person who is capable of truly hearing, listening, and empathizing with what happened. Mm. Um, we're having some of those experiences now for the last year with members of the Dutch Reformed Church leadership. We're working at the leadership level. And it's been a very interesting relationship because Kulumani members have never had their lives economically restored, structurally restored to date because they made such huge sacrifices in the struggle and they lost the breadwinners in their families, they, they live in very difficult situations um, today. And so f for us facilitating these encounters, it's about we don't want your pity, we are your equals. Um, and, and so we've managed to create a space where it is about we are equal human beings of equal value and worth. And we find that the white Afrikaners are absolutely blown away because they expect to be have so many grudges held against them and to be judged and blamed and they say but why aren't you people more angry with us and I think the anticipation in white people is they don't want to go into these incredibly healing encounters in case they are judged and blamed mm. and that is not what's there on the ground um, but the wounding um, I've just been in the office with a, a young man who was the son of the military commander for Mkontowe Sizwe for the whole East Rand, who was murdered and buried at night in the Katlehong Cemetery. And six, um, three months later, they, they dug up his coffin and took it to Kamati Put and told the family to come and collect a coffin that was riddled with bullet holes with a very decomposed body. And of course, they only allowed 10 people to attend the funeral. And the hurt of the the indignity of treating somebody like that. I mean, we still haven't got, we're busy preparing to try and provide a new coffin and to do a reburial um, in the place where he came from. You know, that, and that, so that the son was saying, ends then, you know, I, I wanted to take revenge. I wish M. Kontu Wissizi was still alive because I would be one of the foremost commanders. That's what we have to deal mm. with. And um, so it's like when you read, when you read those words, um, he says, I don't have any regrets. In fact, I ended up visiting prisoners on death row, and I used to end up on the Tuesday when his family visited every time in their uh, um, khaki uniform. They were very militarized, the Freyheids Front, Afrikaner Freyheids Front. And you can't believe the way the black, of course, most people on death row were black people, and the dignity and the respect with which they treated these people. And you thought, like, surely this is going to make these people change. But I don't know how much change has happened at that level of very fundamentalist uh, rejection of the humanity of black people. Okay, I'm not we're gonna, sure. We're going to pick up on that. We've got mm. a caller there, Deline, calling from Johannesburg. Go ahead, Deline. Yes, um, I'd just like to state 
um, that it's not only black and white. It's even between white and white or African between African. You know, you can't get on with everybody. But, you know, it, it's not pathetic. It really is. And the mindsets haven't changed yet, and it's very sad in this country because I don't see how we can progress. You know, they can even damage a simple thing like a tree that has got no say, that has been there for our oxygen, that is beneficial to our land, and they can even damage something like that to get back at a person, you know? And, I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm. It really is. You know, you don't know who it is. It's all undercurrent. But, I mean, this is the country that we live in. Okay, thank you, Delete. I mean, maybe, okay. maybe you can respond to that. I think it was, uh, you know, people sort of lashing out because possibly they can't express themselves and maybe there's uh, very little understanding still. I think even for Stredo, he really has been brought up in an environment where he never got to know what it means to be human. Mm. Because to be human is to be connected to other human beings. Mm. And as a person with a full consciousness of your humanity, you can never kill someone in that sort of way. Mm. Unless, you know, it's an accident or in real extreme self-defense. Mm. Now this, what Dalian is describing, is pent up rage. Yeah. If you live in Guguletu, in a shack, and your parents were killed in the struggle for freedom, and you watch the people who are oppressing your parents, living in opulence. Mm. How else, if you are a human, can you react except to be enraged? Mm. And so what we really need to look at is not a blame game. Why should someone attack this or whatever? We should accept that as a society, we have unfinished business. And this okay. unfinished Let's leave business it there. I, I want to leave on your, the, your point about rage because we're going to yes. kick off the next section about rage and how it helps this conversation. And we're going to be doing that after the break.